The American Rescue Plan of 2021 is now law, signed by President Biden this week. It's almost $2 trillion and dedicates money to states and local governments, something Democrats have been calling for and hoping for. Let's talk about that and more with State Senator Vin Gopal of Monmouth County. Senator, welcome and good to see you again, man. Good morning, David. So I imagine you watched the president's address to the nation. What did you hear that you liked? And is there something you wanted to hear that maybe you didn't? I was just happy to have a president that, uh, you know, was showing civility, bipartisanship, uh, you know, and being a role model. I mean, I thought he gave a great speech. I even heard from Republicans who may not agree with everything in that stimulus plan that at least uh, he, he's leading and, and showing uh, uh, to be an example for everyone. And, and I think we're past the days of putting out tweets and every other way that divides people. So I thought it was a great speech. One of my big takeaways was this contention that government matters. He said government is not some foreign force in the distant capital, the government is us. I mean, after four years of a president who insulted government as the enemy, this really represents a, a key change in terms of, of message and philosophy, no? Yeah, I mean, listen, government plays a responsibility to take care of those who are our most vulnerable. It should not matter what zip code you're from. Uh, it should not matter what your race, religion, sexual orientation is. Government has a responsibility that basic inalienable rights are given to every person. And I think President Biden represents that. And just the sense that that everybody is government. I mean, you know, your neighbor down the street is on the zoning board or the planning board or city council person. It, it kind of, to me, uh, made that a lot more clear than in previous administrations, which kind of uh, portrayed government as people behind these iron curtains, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, Republicans talk about support the police. Police officers are our government. Postal officers uh, are garbage getting picked up. These are all our neighbors, our friends, and it's it's supposed to be a bedrock of our community, not something that's a hostile uh, term. So this aid to states and localities is something uh, Governor Murphy and legislative leaders have been hoping for, but the question now is of uh, how that money gets used. Should there be some restrictions on how the governor uses those funds? I, I think there are restrictions uh, similar to the last stimulus. It has to be related to COVID-19 expenses. Um, I know uh, many of the municipalities and counties who are getting it are gonna be uh, helping nonprofit organizations, helping uh, some small business grants and just helping with, with costs that they lost revenue. I mean, we've got a lot of beach communities in my district that lost the a lot of revenue uh, last year. They did a little better as the summer went on, but there's a lot of ways I think this is going to help. And, and ultimately, uh, hopefully, will help people's tax bill. I want to talk about these, these cannabis cleanup efforts in a minute, but I know you've been a big advocate for business in Monmouth County, where the economy is so dependent on tourism and the bar and restaurant industry. The governor will increase capacity, I guess it's next week, maybe, uh, to 50% in restaurants and, and bars. Is it too little, too late? Like I would have liked to see some clarity earlier. Uh, my hope is that we get to 100% by Memorial Day. I believe if a majority of New Jerseyans who want to be vaccinated are, I can't wait till I'm eligible until when everyone is vaccinated. Um, I, I believe uh, there's no reason not to be at 100%. We still have to wear masks and social distance outside, but uh, we have to be up and running by Memorial Day. Uh, not just for our economy, but to make sure uh, normalcy, mental health. There's a variety of reasons. And, and uh, you know, not enough credit goes to the folks working and doing an extraordinary job on who've gotten these vaccines out, including J&J &J here in New Jersey. So uh, it's, it's an incredible time when we think about the vaccine hitting and, and, and killing the first person a year ago. And here we are a year later, uh, and these vaccines are out. And uh, obviously, rollout and others have been concerning, but we're headed in the right direction. What's your expectation for the industry this summer? It could go either way, right? I mean, if you get to 100% capacity in the summer, places like Asbury and, and Belmar and so on, they, they're going to have a pretty good summer then. I think it's going to skyrocket. I think people are antsy. People are ready to go. Um, and uh, as they're vaccinated, we, we've seen the side effects of these vaccines minimal. One day of a little bit of pain, but nothing serious. Um, and we've seen... Uh, 
minimal uh, minimal effects when someone gets the vaccine and they get the virus after that. So I think people are going to be ready to, to return to normalcy. Yeah, and a noticeable up and a noticeable uptick in in hopeful feelings too that I'm getting. A lot of optimism now, and I think it's the first time in a while it's been like that. All right, let's talk cannabis in the few minutes we have left here. Uh, there was the public question, then the decriminalization bill, then the cleanup of the bill, then the numerous versions of the enabling legislation, and that had to get cleaned up, and that got cleaned up. Then the governor signs it, and now there's more cleaning up to do. You've got a bill out that corrects what a lot of people thought was a big mistake in one of those cleanup bills, covering police notification to parents. Tell me about it. Yeah, I, I think it was a mistake for the legislature to, to do this originally. Um, I, I, uh, I read the bill twice. I, I have not been involved in, in the cannabis process. I've been more focused on taxes and schools. So obviously I supported legalization, but this wasn't, hasn't been a priority for me. And the bill had some good things in there um, on the economic uh, impact zones and how, how funds on criminal justice. Uh, but the reality is there's some things in there that need to be cleaned up. I don't think this is going to be the only cleanup bill. I think there's going to be others. But to not allow a parent or guardian to know what their 15 or 16 year old is doing is pretty uh, insane to me. So uh, as soon as uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm mad at myself and I think other legislators should be mad at themselves that they didn't drill down on this. I'd be honest, I didn't. I missed it. Um, the second I learned what it was after, I was like, this has got to change ASAP. Um, I, I understand the Senate's going to be moving in on second reading on, on March 25th, hopefully the assembly right after I spoke to the speaker. And it looks like the governor's in support. So hopefully we get this cleaned up ASAP. I want to get your thoughts on uh, the complaints by many in the black community that the Cannabis Regulatory Commission has no uh, black men on it. Can, can that be fixed? I mean, it's... It, yeah, are all the spots filled? I didn't think all the spots had been filled yet. Yeah, um, all the spots are filled right now. All spots have been filled. I mean, we have to look at the staffing structure. We have to look. I know there is the diversity. Uh, Maria Maria Dalsed, who's extraordinary, uh, is is on there uh, from the Department of Health. There's some extraordinary people on there, and hopefully they fix the staffing structure. Um, maybe I'll make a big stink about making sure there's South Asians on there too. So we will. Uh, we 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 need to just make sure that the executive director, deputy director, and just because the commissioners themselves may not be black or South Asian or or whatever it may be, they just have to make sure there's programs that are inclusive of all those communities and all those voices. All right, Senator Vin Gopal, good to see you, man. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Thank you so much, David.